Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I'm in Spanish mode today. Uh, in Spain, I am Efaimon, uh, and so I have a sixth wine here uh, for uh, mine and your delectation. Uh, from rather different cor corners uh, of mostly northern Spain, but um, I'll shut up and we'll dig in. Uh, first one I have I got is uh, Sabina Tempranillo 2011 from Navarra. I think it's so cheap and cheerful. Primarily Tempranillo with a small proportion of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Let us give it a whirl. Well, that jumps out of the glass and says, hello. Um, it's, um, it's almost like summer pudding. Uh, slightly baked summer pudding, as if someone's uh, forgotten that you're not supposed to bake summer pudding and has shoved it in the oven for a bit, and the bread's gone a bit crispy and toasty, and the fruit's gone a little bit. Some of it's oozed through and stuck on the side of the bowl. Um, so it smells like it's going to be quite ruddy and round, uh, but uh, still with a little bit of perky freshness. Juicy, perky and ripe and uh, saying come hither and uh, especially if you have a sausage. Um, so uh, they, yeah, there's this um, uh, unoaked, uncomplicated, rounded, bumptious, fresh fruit about it. Dark fruit, uh, no red berries in there but there's black currants. Maybe a little bit of red car currants in there uh, if there's any redness there. Uh, blackberries and um, a bit of a bit of earthiness, a bit of spice. Uh, it's, it's just a nice fresh drink and it's about six quid. Bargain. Nice introduction. Let's uh, try the next one. So that was Navarra. This is Ribera del Duero uh, in the form of Lagaris Roble. Um, and Roble is what they put on when uh, the wine's been in oak for a short time but not enough to, for it to qualify for Criantha. I think it's got to have been in um, a barrel for a year to uh, be sold as a Criantha. It says on the back, three months in American oak. Uh, I'm always a bit suspicious when people put a, a wine in barrel for such a short time. Sometimes it can extract some of the mean flavours from the barrel and not benefit from the ageing process. But here, uh, I stick my nose in and there's a little bit of that uh, uh, toasty, sweet, coconutty edge of oak. Uh, but um, none of the green meanies. It feels like the, the, the wine has been um, given a nice framework by the oak. Um, and uh, so there's, there's this chance for uh, the, 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 fr the sort of freshness about it. And I was talking about lack of red fruit character on the first one. Here there is a little bit of red fruit freshness, so it's more on that um, strawberries and then the blackberries and the black currants as well. Um, smells good. Young, vigorous style. Not too vigorous. It's, the fruit's not too ripe. It's not gone over into the jammy spectrum. Um, but uh, yes, it's got, it's got this life and it's got this perkiness. Um, I'd like to see it, um, we are, we're in, in, the, in the middle of, no, end of June now. I'd like to see it in about six months' time because there's just a little bit of that closed-in character um, that, uh, yeah, needs to blossom. Uh, I think come autumn that'll be shining. Or if you want to drink it now, whiz it in a jug for uh, an hour or two and it will just go, it'll relax into its glass, relax into its bottle. Uh, and I think the relaxing will be worthwhile. I, I do like that uh, uh, that mixture. Ribera del Duero can sometimes be a bit too um, macho. Here, there, it's it's almost on that more floral, fragrant edge of, uh, of Ribera del Duero, and I think they've done a pretty good job there. Let's see whether we are in macho territory with uh, La Bascula, Turret Fields, Monastrel Syrah, 2010. So, uh, from uh, the region of Jumia. Uh, who, Mia? Yes, you are. So, uh, 2010 vintage. Monastrel, it's the, um, that's the Spanish name for what they know in France as Mauvedre, uh, the main grape of uh, Bondol in Provence. You'll find it in, uh, uh, in, in the Southern Rhone, in the Languedoc, uh, and it can be a bit of an awkward git there. But if you get it to, uh, get it to this place, uh, it suddenly seems to uh, reveal this uh, more rounded, uh, polished, uh, it still retains this meatiness that it has in those southern French bits, uh, but it gets it, it just seems to relax a bit, uh, not be quite as difficult as it can be in, in, in southern France. Uh, so here you've got the um, uh, the rounded, almost louche character of, of, um, of ripe Mauvedre stroke Monastrel coming through, uh, and then Syrah giving it a little bit of structure. Uh, it smells good, it smells like it's going to be quite full bodied, but still have, thanks to that Syrah, uh, a little bit of backbone and freshness. And then I come to taste it and I think, oh, I don't know about that freshness. It smelled like it was going to be fresh, but the finish I'm left with is this slightly over-polished licorice. So there's a bit of, um, uh, uh, yeah, polished, polished wooden floors, um, rounded, rather fat, ever so slightly jammy character. And uh, so it smells good, but 
and I come to taste it, and uh, yeah, the, the, I think I think that's a bit too ripe. Um, and uh, I don't know whether it's, it's just something that's been picked that little bit too late. Um, there's nothing that feels on the jammy side, but it's just this general presence of that, that licorice character, that uh, slight volatile polish character. Um, good, but um, there was a fresher wine to be made, maybe not in this region. So, um, yeah, one of those wines, some of them smell good and some of them uh, uh, and then don't taste as good. Let's see whether we can say the same for this trio of 2007s. Uh, two of which, the first two of which, uh, come from the um, Pitakum uh, winery uh, in the Biezzo region, which is, uh, it's not Galicia, Biezzo, it's the, um, it's the most north, most, most northwesterly outpost of uh, the Castilla e Leon region, of which Ribera del Duero is part. Um, and uh, but, but uh, the, the Menthea grape that they they, uh, they use here for their red wines, um, it, they also grow it uh, quite a lot of it over the well. There's like a gap. There's like uh, there's a set of hillsides, and then uh, and then there's a gap. And uh, I think some Atlantic bl breezes blow through there, giving some freshness to the Menthea. A Menthea is an interesting grape. Uh, actually, I'd better tell you what it is first. Pitacum 2007 uh, Biezzo. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a it's, it's a grape that um, uh, some people compare it to uh, Syrah. I, I I suppose I I think of it as halfway between Syrah and Cabernet Franc. It's got a little bit of the um, macho gutsiness of uh, Syrah, but some of the fragrance of Cabernet Franc. Um, but if you get it, when I say macho gustin, gutsiness of Syrah, uh, that's it. In um, uh, if you if you really uh, get it very ripe, if you get it on the um, uh, just ripe side, it gets that more peppery fragrance side of Syrah that you find in the Northern Rhone. Does that make sense? Better taste the wine and shut up, haven't I? And there's a bold meatiness here. It feels, if I were to compare it with Syrah from anywhere, maybe the longer dock is the closest approximation. There's this um, wild herbiness um, and there's a plum jam, uh, not too jammy. Uh, there's the berries and then there's this earthiness, a sense of place and uh, the herbs uh, strewn over the uh, over over the bouquet. Let's taste it and see whether that's uh, still what I'm still getting strewn. Juicy, rich brown sugar, uh, some chocolatey character there. Um, is it too big? Uh, I think of Menthea as being a grape that at its best uh, does come across and has have, have this perky freshness. And here it's more the softness and roundness I see. Alcohol-wise, it is fourteen and a half percent. I just wish that they'd um, they maybe picked it a little bit earlier, uh, so it wasn't quite as forceful. Um, it's certainly I can't fault it for intensity of flavour. It's three years older than the uh, Turret Fields and still has a little bit more freshness and life and perkiness about it. But um, I almost wish that they'd uh, just been a little bit more uh, instead of uh, trying to impress that they seem to be wanting to do with this wine, uh, just uh, thinking, right, okay, I want a wine that's fresh and drinkable. Uh, I, want, I want a second, a third glass type of wine, and uh, not sure whether I'd get onto a second one with this. Let's try, I think this is Big Brother, this is Corpiticum Aurea. Um, 14 months in uh, French oak, uh, well it says in, in, in oak, uh, does it say what type of oak? No it doesn't, or uh, blah blah blah, no, anyway. Uh, and alcohol wise it's the same, same vintage, same, um, same level of alcohol. So I'm, I'd, have, I'd have sworn that the first one had been um, in, in oak for a little while. Yeah, it says that this one's been in French and American oak, so maybe that's not been in oak for quite as long. Let's see whether this one uh, is uh, a step up or a step down. I, to be honest, I've not looked at uh, uh, where these sit in the Pitacum portfolio. Well, it smells like a more polished style, um, and uh, what I mean by that is, uh, if the first one had this uh, slightly wild meatiness about it, here it feels like somebody has uh, uh, has dressed it up a little bit and said, "Come on, you've got to meet the parents now. Put a tie on." Uh, and but still, there's a, a little bit of the rustic roughness coming through, uh, which I like. Um, but uh, again, my it smells like my problem with it is going to be should they have picked the grapes a bit earlier and got a little bit more freshness in there. So uh, I like I like the wild herbiness. Um, I like the, the the oak is not giving oaky flavours. It's just adding a um, a rounder, smoother framework that maybe to to the first one. Uh, to, uh, yeah, compared with compared with the one before, it smells it smells pretty good, but of a style where it freshness is not its forte. The oak seems to have given a little bit more uh, rounded. 
Um, it, it's strange. At one time, it, it, at once it's made the fruit fresher, but also it's given a, a, a sweeter character, if that makes sense. doesn't make sense to me, but that's a, uh, first impressions. Um, and again, the finish I get on both of these makes me think that, um, yes, there is concentration there, but having aged wines like this in the past, I, I have been really disappointed with how they've aged. Uh, they've lost, uh, it, it's like somebody who was, um, who was quite full-bodied in their youth, and then uh, the muscle that they had in the youth turned, to, uh, turned a bit seedy. They got a bit bingo wings type of thing. Uh, so um, it's, um, th these are wines that um, I would almost rather drink as young as possible uh, rather than uh, let, them, let them just go a bit seedy in middle age. Uh, I, as I say, I can't fault the concentration. I know that will be a huge audience for styles of wines like this. But uh, personally, I want something livelier and perkier than these slightly stolid, big, um, yeah, slightly awkward wines. Interesting thing is, the, uh, these come from a, a, a producer who uh, uh, who makes the uh, makes some terrific uh, wines in uh, in Galicia. Uh, the um, oh god, what's he called? Terras Gauda. Uh, yeah, Terras Gauda. Um, and their Alberidia, their Orozal Alberino is one of my favourite wines I've tried in the last couple of months. Uh, but here it feels like there's a, a different person in charge of the mentality um, of uh, of the style of wine you want to produce. The Galician ones are all about, um, yeah, Atlantic perkiness. Here, it seems to be about um, stolid and, uh, yeah, how many notches, how, how hairy is your chest type of wine. I'll shut up and I'll have another taste, because it may have improved. It's okay, um, but I imagine some people, there will be some critics who give those fabulous scores, but um, it certainly doesn't hit my buttons. Final wine, um, and uh, so no, th those were Castilla Leon. We're still in Castilla Leon, not quite in uh, Ribera del Duero, but pretty close to it here. This is uh, Quinta Sardonia, um, and it's Vino de la Tierra de Castilla y Leon. I think it's a Vino de, de Tierra because it's just outside the uh, Ribera del Duero border. I think it comes from uh, Peter Sisek, who's the uh, uh, who's the guy behind uh, Pingus, and uh, which is one of Spain's, if not Spain's, most expensive wines. Then one of them, but weighing in at fifteen percent alcohol, big consomme-like umami, rich um, port-like style, and interesting thing about saying something like that there are certain palates around the world who will be going whoa that's just the sort of wine i want and there'll be other people who say that's exactly the sort of thing i don't want uh, personally i it smells like it's going to be just too rich too much for its own good um too concentrated um and uh, yeah a wine that's designed to impress rather than to be drunk um, I, so there's this um, really rich, deep plum jam character, lots of berries, um, this uh, slightly, uh, I mean, all of these three I get, I get a little bit of Britannomyces on, but uh, it's not dominating the wine. My concern is that when you've got wines at this high alcohol, low acid level, they just dry out as they get older. It doesn't feel like it's dried out, but um, certainly freshness is not its forte again. And I'm afraid I find that just a bit rich, sweet, simple, baked, burnt. Um, there's the um, dark berries there, um, but there's no, there's no perkiness. There's, um, it, it really is strange. I, I mean, the, the, these last three wines I think are all have got um, quite considerable prices. But to my favourites of this row of six, I mean, the first one is about six quid. I'd rather drink that. Uh, than the, these last three. Uh, the Ligaris, I thought, was uh, did its job really well. But here, the, the flavour I'm left with is um, sweet and jammy. I don't want a sweet and jammy wine. I, if I want sweet and jammy, I, well, I'll have jam. Um, I, I, I want wine to be refreshing, um, and I want it to be en enliven my food. That I, There's very few foods that I, I, I can think of where that would be a compliment to. It would be a dictator to the food. Oh well. Um, but um, hopefully styles of wine like that are on the wane. But um, I, I think the ones I'll be, I think I'll be on the Ligaris tonight. And uh, if that runs out, then maybe the uh, uh, the Sabina will provide a, a final glass for. Uh, there, I, I, of course, there are, there are more than one of me drinking tonight. But uh, hey, see you soon.